Hello everyone, it's yet another great day to be alive and today we're making a favorite classic. At least in our house when the kids were little, it was a favorite. And all you need from the fridge is some milk, some cheese, and some butter, along with a few things from your pantry, of course. I'm Rick Michelle, stick around. I'm going to show you, you can cook great food at home. <music> Yes, all you need is some milk, some cheese, and some butter from the fridge. Now, these are three things that are always in our fridge. And along with that, you are going to need one can of tuna. And I don't think it really matters whether you have the brine or one in the, in the oil. I always use the one in the brine, but I've got a half of an onion that's chopped, fairly small pieces. I've got two large tablespoons of flour, obviously the butter. And this is an optional thing, it's just red bell pepper. It just adds that little specks of red throughout your dish, just makes it look nice. It's not really put there in for flavor or anything, just make it look nice. This really is a super tasty dish and it's so easy to make. Probably, I guess if you, there was a tricky part, the trickiest part would be the roux, but look, once you guys see this, there's nothing difficult about it at all. Those of you that have made this before, okay, probably going to find this pretty boring. For those of you that have never tried it, uh, I implore you to try this because this is really super tasty and it only takes one pan and it's very quick. So let's get on over to that stove and put this together. Okay, first thing we do is heat up our butter, melt our butter. Now I'm going to do this a little bit different. I don't want to just make the roux and then soften up the onions in a different bowl. I do it all in the same bowl and it's mostly so I just don't have to clean up another pot. I throw in my onions, little capsicums if I'm using them, and that's going to take five minutes, six, seven minutes. We just wanted to soften them up before we make our roux. It's been probably not even five minutes. For those of you that don't have never made anything like this, your onions you know are soft when they go from that white solid color to that somewhat what you see now, that transparent color, that translucent color. This is where we throw in our flour. I take it off the heat for a minute. And we just want to just cook that up on a lower heat so we don't burn it. To cook that flour out and look, I have just learned over the last few days there is a lot more to ruse than meets the eye, and a lot more to ruse than what you see here. Uh, we'll be getting that into maybe, hopefully, next season. We're going to start adding the milk to this. We're only going to add a tiny little bit to start with, and we're going to keep stirring constantly. And I've preheated the milk up. So this is pretty warm milk. You don't have to do that. It just speeds the process up. Oop. I'm going to take that off the heat. More milk. I never measure the milk. I don't really go by, I don't really follow recipes like that. I'll just keep adding milk until I get to the consistency that I want. I'm going to have to get some more milk and clean up this mess. We basically want a very soupy consistency. So keep adding milk and bear in mind that you got a lot of stuff to go in here like cheese and the tuna fish, which is even going to also thicken it up even more. So maybe you want it fairly on the runny side. I've now got about two and a half cups in there and I'm sure I'm going to need some more. It's looking very good and even though these cheese is salty, I add a good teaspoon of chicken powder. I've got at least a cup of cheese here and I'm going to put all the cheese in. If you don't like as much cheese, you add less. If you want more cheese, by all means put more cheese in there and put any kind of cheese you want in there. And I'm going to put in the tuna fish now. You can see it's still thick. I'm going to add a bit more milk. I've probably got three cups of milk in there now. There's no science to this, just add the milk until you get to the consistency you want. Probably the most important thing to remember with this dish is to not just let it sit there. It will stick to the bottom. Keep stirring it. That's it. Probably 15 minutes. That's how fast that is. And it's super delicious. And look guys, this dish, it's one of those things that's kind of like um, 
meatloaf. There's so many different variations that you can do with this. Try putting flavors, uh, uh, curry flavors, really, really nice. You can turn this into a bake, you know, cheese over the top with breadcrumbs. Just let the mind go. Like I always say, get in that kitchen, mix it up, make it yours. Now, what I, how I finish this off, I've got some roasted capsicum, and it's simply because they were in the fridge. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to sprinkle a few little capsicums over that. I've got, you know my favorite topping now, spring onions. A few little spring onions. And when I have this dish, my most favorite, I'm either going to take a chili, chop it up and sprinkle that over. A lot of times I put Tabasco, so Tabasco, try that. You don't have to have the hot stuff, but obviously it has to have a little bit of pepper. And the kids love it. If you like what you see, you can subscribe right here where my face is uh, or down below on the little red subscribe button. Get in that kitchen, cook some great food. I'm Rick Michelle. This is You Can Cook Great Food at Home.